What up fam, and welcome to another episode of Honest Gaming History. Oh shit, it's the OG opening. You know what that means fam, don't you couldn't think of anything to write. Yo, shut your face. Anyways, today we're covering a character that I feel like has been asked for since the first episode of Honest Gaming History. He's one of the strongest ninja in the world, but instead of waking up and choosing, you know, stealth, he chooses violence. He's been saving the world since 1988, and after spending more than six years MIA, rumor has it that he may be returning in another ninja guiding game. This time on Honest Gaming History, we're covering the legendary dragon ninja, Ryu Hayabusa. Play that intro, son. So since talking about Ryu, let's begin with some background on the game he's from, Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden started in 1988 with the release of Ninja Ryu Kenden for the NES in Japan. Weird thing is that a Ninja Gaiden arcade game came out in 1988 as well, but only in America. We ended up getting the NES version a year later in 1989, and Japan got the arcade version in 1989 as well. So Japan and America switch release dates? Yeah, I guess because arcades were more popular during that time in the States. Anyways, the game was published by Tecmo, now known as Koei Tecmo. After the first game's release, two more were made for the NES, and believe it or not, these guys actually put a story in this shit. The series was praised for being one of the first to present a story with its cutscenes. After the NES trilogy, it ended up getting a game on the Game Boy called Ninja Gaiden Shadow, a game on the Master System, an anime, and so on. Then 1996 happened. Under Tecmo, a group of developers, led by the famous Tobunobu Itagaki, named Team Ninja, created a fighting game you may heard of, Dead or Alive. This game had nothing to do with Ninja Gaiden story-wise, but guess what they put in it? Our boy Ryu. He would continue to show up in the series as a playable character, and surprisingly, his day in Dead or Alive actually became canon to his full story. Then in 2004, Team Ninja decided to bless the world again. Itagaki walked into the higher-ups of Tecmo like, Listen, Ninja Gaiden was fire, so what I'ma do is remake it and make the best action game ever. But it will fall in line with my Dead or Alive plot. And with that, Ninja Gaiden for the Xbox was released. It received very high acclaim, being known for its obscene difficulty and fast-paced violence. From here, the new series continued, with the latest main installment being Ninja Gaiden 3. There was also Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z, but that's not really about Ryu. As we said earlier, there are rumors about a Ninja Gaiden 4, but I'ma need more than that to say it's set in stone yet. But now that you know a little bit about Ninja Gaiden's history, let's enter the world of the game and get into the story of its main character, Ryu Hayabusa. Long ago, Back before humans started walking the earth, 13 dragons watched over the planet, but evil deities lurked in the background waiting for their chance to be evil and shit. The dragon gods waged war on the evil deities, but after mad years of battling, the gods defeated the evil ones. This led to a time of peace between the dragons and humans, who now exist, but that peace got snuffed out when the 13th dragon betrayed his siblings. He was influenced by the evil deities and grew jealous of his fellow dragons, so he stole their strength in order to become the dark dragon. So you mean Lil Bro just bodied 12 other dragons? That's some shit. With nothing in his way, the Dark Dragon plunged the world into chaos and allowed the evil deities to return from the underworld. But the other dragon gods had one last strategy. They poured the last of their strength into one of their fangs, forming the legendary Dragon Sword. They entrusted the weapon to an unknown warrior, and with it he managed to slay the Dark Dragon. After this, the sword would be passed down the warrior's bloodline, dubbing the bloodline the Dragon Lineage. The bloodline makes it their duty to protect the world from evil supernatural forces. Eventually, the evil deities return to power and create a blade out of the bones of the Dark Dragon to counter the Dragon Sword. This one named the Dark Dragon Sword. But the Dragon lineage felt the unbalance in the Force with the creation of this malevolent weapon. So one of the Dragon Warriors beats them up and takes the Dragon Sword so his bloodline can keep it safe. Eventually, the Dragon Warriors form the Hayabusa clan. And over the years, the line comes down to his last two members, Joe Hayabusa and his son, Ryu. As a child, Ryu went through the harshest kind of shinobi training. He made some friends like Kuraha, who ends up becoming the clan's shrine maiden. Then over time, he excels through the ninja academy and graduates top of his class. Now that he's a full-fledged ninja, we can move to his first adventure, which takes place in the Ninja Gaiden arcade game. The year is 1999. Joe Hayabusa hears about this cult called the Cult of Nostradamus, who is trying to end the world because of some prophecy. Joe is like, oh hell nah, can't have that. So he makes plans to head to San Francisco to pay them a violent visit. But his son wants it on the action too. So Ryu joins his father, they head to San Francisco and take out countless members of the cult. Then they take out their leader, Blade Damas. Blade Damas? Like Blade, then Damas from Nostradamus? Yes, I know, it's dumb as hell. But think about when this game came- No, 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 don't give him an excuse. Play Damas? So, so we just put in weapons in our names now, huh? But honestly, I shouldn't be surprised though. Look at this man. This dude's name was probably Keith. He thought it wasn't as old enough. Then he went into some deep web rabbit hole and started a culture so he could name himself Play Damas. He probably doesn't even say it normally. My man be like, call me Play Damasu. 
Yo, you need to chill. So after Blade Damas gets bodied, Ryu and his pops return to Japan to continue training. Then a year later, a dictator named Emperor Garuda rises up with an army and just takes over New York City. This takes us to the Game Boy game Ninja Gaiden Shadow. That's right, folks, this is the first honest gaming history with a Game Boy title in it. Ryu travels to the land of chopped cheeses and tins, then single-handedly takes out Garuda and his army. My man said, if you mess with my bacon egg and cheese, you will catch these hands. Now we move to the first modern Ninja Gaiden game. Ryu is entrusted with the dragon sword by his father, so now that's his main weapon. He gets called in for some special training by his uncle Mirai, but once he gets there, his uncle's disciple Ayane tells him that his village is on fire. Ryu is hella confused, so he heads home only to find a fiendish warriors attacking the place. He rips through the hordes of fiends, but moves forward only to find Kuraha dead. The murderer? This bitch-ass fiend samurai named Doku, who is wielding the dark dragon sword the Hayabusa clan has spent years keeping from the hands of evil. Pissed, Ryu tries to take on the fiend, but Doku overpowers him and cuts him down. Then the fiend leaves with the dark dragon sword. Now Ryu seemingly dies here, but then the Hayabusa animal spirit, a falcon, appears out of nowhere and maybe revives him. All we know is that he wakes up three weeks later feeling completely fine, then Mirai tells him about the fiends who attacked him. The samurai is lord of the greater fiends of the Holy Vigor Empire. With this new information in hand, Ryu exchanges his old school blue ninja guard for his dope ass black falcon one. Then he heads to the Vigor Empire to get his revenge on Doku. As he tears through the hordes of fiends, he meets someone named Rachel. Then he eventually runs into Doku. They have their rematch and he wins this time, killing the fiendish samurai. But he doesn't have the dark dragon blade. He tells Ryu that the emperor has it and the awakening is soon at hand. So Ryu's like, you fiends ain't awakening shit. So he changes his target to the emperor of the Vigor Empire. On his quest, he finds out that his sword is not complete. To unlock the true power of it, he must combine it with a jewel called the Eye of the Dragon. And it just so happens that as a shrine maiden, his late friend Kuraha used to protect the jewel. So upon visiting her grave, he finds the jewel and combines it with the Dragon Sword. This turns it into the Shin Ryu Ken, or True Dragon Sword. Now his weapon is infused with divine power, as if he wasn't enough of a problem. Godly weapon in hand, Ryu resumes his quest to kill the Emperor, who he finds out has been completely controlled by the head dark deity, Vigor. The Fiend has big dreams of becoming the supreme deity, so he plans on using the dark dragon sword to aid him in achieving his goal. On the way to stop the evil god's plan, he runs into the spirit form of Doku, who he defeats again. But because he's salty, Doku puts a fiendish curse on the ninja. But Ryu is too gangster for this curse, son. Using pure willpower, he prevents himself from turning into a fiend. Then to flex even more, he makes his way to Vigor after taking out even more strong fiends, then defeats him too. Yo. Anyone who says Ryu isn't the goal for this is straight lying to themselves. For real, my man just went through the whole Pokemon League while poisoned. No potions. So with the Emperor dead, Ryu's curse lifts and he grabs a Dark Dragon Blade. But as he escapes the place he was in, he drops the sword, which gets picked up by his uncle Mirai. Now you think Mirai would give the sword back to his nephew, right? They're family. Why would you betray family? But this is the ninja world, bruh. Everybody cold-blooded. Mirai reveals that this was all a part of his master plan. He told the Vigor Emperor about the whereabouts of the Dark Dragon Sword to get him to send an army to retrieve it. That special training invitation was just a way to get him away from his clan. Now, I'm not sure if he expected Ryu to drop the sword like that, but now he has it, and the Dark Sword is infusing him with its power. But this live bastard forgot one thing. Ryu is fucking broken. After all the shit he went through, including slaying the head Dark Deity while fighting off a curse, he still has some more smoke left in the tank. So my ninja, defeats his uncle, then shatters the Dark Dragon Blade. In hindsight, they should have probably destroyed that shit a long time ago. Yeah, but then there wouldn't be a plot. Anyway, six months after slapping the shit out of his uncle for not putting family first, the Hayabusa village gets rebuilt. Ryu is currently training with his disciple, Momiji, who was the little sister of his late friend, Kuraha. But shit hits the fan again when the village gets invaded by Black Spider Ninja, thus taking us to Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword for the DS. This Black Spider Ninja Clan has had a rivalry with the Hayabusa Clan for years, and they're trying to get their hands on the Dragon Sword, the Eye of the Dragon, and all the Dark Dragon Stones, which have the power to revive the Dark Dragon. Their ultimate goal is to revive Vigor, though, so they kidnap Momiji since her sister used to protect the Eye of the Dragon. Ryu refuses to let fiends kill Momiji like they did Kuraha, so after searching for all but one of the Dark Dragon Stones, he stops the Ninja Clan before they're able to revive the deity. But then they bring back the Dark Dragon. Yeah, but Ryu takes it out, so it's all good. Six months later though, Ryu and his father run into a vampire named Crimson. Apparently, vampires have been enemies of the dragon lineage for a long time, so them fighting vampires is just a part of an honest day's work. The two eventually take out Crimson, then head back home. But Ryu finds out that the Black Spider Ninja Clan is planning to infiltrate Tokyo. Ryu's not trying to have that, so he leaves his home to head over there. Once in Tokyo, he saves a CIA agent named Sonya from Black Spider Ninja, and luckily for him, she has very important info for him. 
fiends are at it again. They're working together with the Black Spider Ninja Clan to revive the Archfiend Vazda. Oh, and his village is about to get attacked again. Yo, can my man get one year without someone attacking his village? I mean, he does have legendary items like the Eye of the Dragon over there, so it makes sense. Yeah, but all Ryu's gonna do is roll up in their base and kill all of them. These fiends need to hit each other up and share their plans or some shit, because this whole attack Hayabusa village plan is not working. True. So Ryu rushes home only to find his village destroyed once again. He tears through the invaders, then he finds his father struggling against the leader of the Black Spider Ninja Clan, Genshin, and a woman fiend named Elizabeth. The lady dips with the demon statue, the artifact they need to bring Vasta back. Ryu chases after her, but Genshin stops him. But his father steps in to give him the chance to chase after the woman. This sends Ryu on a quest around the world to find this lady, Elizabeth. He kills a buttload of fiends on his journey, and Sonya ends up joining him. He eventually runs into Elizabeth, who reveals that she's the ruler of blood and queen of the greater fiends. They do battle, and Ryu wins again, because y'all ain't seen him with the hands. But after he beats her, she just kind of swirls away in a pool of blood, so she ain't dead yet. Then Genshin shows up and is like, so Ryu. Would you like to know where to go so we can move the plot forward? And Ryu's like, um, sure? Then Genshin tells him that Vaza will be summoned at the peak of Mount Fuji. Then he dips. And Ryu's like, I mean, I'm not gonna do this without my god tier sword. So he heads back home and Ayane gives him the Eye of the Dragon to once again complete his sword. And this is why I need to leave this man alone. Now he has a Jesus Dragon Sword. Everybody gonna die. Obscenely broken sword in hand, Ryu shreds his way through the enemies defending Mount Fuji. Then he finds Genshin, waiting for him to show up for their duel. They have their ninja showdown and Ryu barely wins. Then he jumps to Mount Fuji and enters the underworld. There, he kills even more fiends and rescues Sonya again because she has been following him around all this time, even though he told her to stop. Sonya, you cannot follow me. He runs into Genshin once again, who is now a fiend, but Ryu whoops that ass again. Then Genshin realizes that he was kind of wildin', so he gives Ryu the Black Spider Ninja Clan's sacred weapon, the Blade of the Archfiend, and Ryu respects him for going out like a real warrior. But Elizabeth shows up and starts disrespecting the hell out of Genshin's body, so Ryu cuts her down once and for all. Now with two broken ass blades in hand, he pushes forward. This after ritual meant to summon Vazda. But the bitch ass infernal high priest uses himself as a sacrifice to summon Vazda at the last minute. So now Ryu has another god that he needs to kill. He fights the god once, wins, but then Vazda bounces back so he beats the shit out of him again. With the Archfiend defeated, Ryu and Sonya watch as the sun rises. Then later Ryu pays his respects to Genshin. After spending some time chilling, Ryu's skills are called upon once again. The Japanese self-defense force needs his help dealing with a terrorist group in London, being led by an alchemist who goes by the region of the mask. Apparently this guy personally wants Ryu to come, so he's looking for the dragon hands. So Ryu heads out to find the guy, but upon meeting him, the guy curses his right arm with something called the grip of murder. It's basically a demonic fungus that thrives on all the lives he took with the dragon sword. If he doesn't find a cure, then it will continue to eat at his body until he dies. After this, the masked man dips. Then Ryu convenes with Mizuki, a JSCF agent, and the rest of the JSCF in their airship. There they watch as the region publicly demands that the nations of the world surrender to them within seven days. If not, then they will end everyone. Ryu and friends are like, well, can't have that. So they work together to track down the group of terrorists. The Dragon Ninja finds a region once again in the Rub Al Khali Desert. And there the guy continues talking shit. He talks about how they're the same and his right arm is proof of that. They both killed mad people. He's just mad because now he's facing the consequences for it with that curse. This pisses Ryu off though, cause he kills to save the world, unlike this V ripoff. So he tries to slice the man, but realizes that it's only a mirage. Then he's forced to fight a helicopter, but he's Ryu Hayabusa, so he takes it out no problem. Later he reconvenes with the JSDF, where he meets Mizuki's brother-in-law Cliff, and her daughter Kana. And Hayabusa is actually a pretty chill and caring dude when he's not killing people. So he tries to introduce himself to the daughter, but she freaks out when she sees that he has a murder tumor on his arm. A murder tumor? Yeah, you see that shit, bro? And it thrives on all the lives Ryu killed? Yeah, that's a freaking murder tumor. But after Ryu accidentally scares Kana, Cliff reveals that the terrorist group calls themselves the Lords of Alchemy, or LOA. Ryu is then sent to Abysmal Island because the JSDF believes that LOA may have one of their secret labs there. Once there, he ends up fighting clone dinosaurs, cause why not? Then he saves Mizuki after she gets captured. But then she shoots him with a tranquilizer round. What the fuck, bro? Ryu then wakes up in a VR simulation being run by a mysterious woman named Lovelace. There he fights his way through multiple places that he traveled to in the past, until he breaks himself out. He then fights with the LOA guards and eventually finds and rescues Kana. Then together they save Mizuki from the region and Lovelace, who are working together if you couldn't already guess. Well, they were, but the region has a change of heart. After explaining how they plan on using Ryu's DNA for their malevolent plans, the region just kind of pushes her into their prototype god-creating device. This turns Lovelace into a mutated chimera, which Ryu is forced to kill. Then he 
Mizuki? Mizuki and Kana escaped the place before it self-destructs. But then they're caught and arrested by the freaking US military. Where the hell did you guys come from? The captain tells them that by taking the world's problems into their own hands and fighting the terrorist group, they're putting the life of the other nations at risk. So he tells them to cut this shit and leave this to the modern day heroes. According to this dumbass, ninjas have no place in this world. Obviously he hasn't taken a look at Ryu's resume. Afterwards, Ryu and Mizuki talk about this whole situation and how it seems mad sus. The leader of this whole operation to stop the terrorist, Ken Ishigami, has went missing and now they don't know what to do. After the conversation, Kana runs to them and I guess she really likes Ryu now because she straight up asked him to be her dad. Bro, what? This little girl better chill. I mean, she's had a pretty rough life, so I can understand. Mizuki is not her real mother. She's technically her aunt. Kana's actual parents died and Mizuki has been taking care of her ever since. Plus, Ryu was touched by the request, saying he never thought about being a father before. I mean, okay, but Ryu kills people for a living. You really think he should be adopting a little girl right now? I mean, when you put it like that, nah. So later they reconvene with Cliff, who is also confused about what their next move should be. Ryu tells him that he must return to his village, but before he gets there, he heads to the grave of his old enemy, Genshin. There he takes the blade of the Archfiend from the grave, stating that he is borrowing Genshin's soul. But on his way back to the village, his murder tumor starts acting up again, and he collapses. Momiji, who is now a shrine maiden, nurses him back to hell. Then she suggests that they go talk with his father. But then Black Spider Ninja show up and attack the village once again, and this time they're being led by their old leader who's supposed to be dead, Obaba. Luckily, Momiji and Ryu defeat all of them before they do anything crazy. Then they meet Joe, who Ryu hopes has answers about this curse. But unfortunately, Joe has no answers. He tells him that there was once a warrior who had the same curse, but it took him over and nothing was left with a dragon sword. So that doesn't help. Regardless, Ryu still has to stop these terrorists. So he leaves his village to meet back up with the JSDF. Then he heads to Antarctica to go on a special mission with Cliff. With Cliff? The scientist? That don't sound right. There he does his usual thing of tearing through enemies, but he finds out that LOA is out here making fiends. After defeating them, he goes up against a clone of himself, also created by LOA, using his blood. He defeats that thing, then Cliff shows up with the chairman of LOA. Cliff was working for LOA this whole time. They originally planned for Ryu dying in London, but that didn't pan out since Ryu doesn't believe in failure. But Ryu is even part of their main plan. Their main plan requires Kana, so that can't be good. Knowing this, Ryu tries to go for the two, but the chairman revives his clone and leaves him to fight. Once the clone's out the way, Ryu chases after Cliff and the chairman, but they dip. Then Ryu is rescued by Ishigami. The old man had a feeling that Cliff was evil all this time, but he wasn't able to stop him before Kana got taken. Now Mizuki's trying to figure out a way to save her. Ryu agrees to help them, and together they infiltrate the Black Narwhal, the vessel where LOA is keeping Kana and their complete god-creating machine called the God Egg. Once in, Ryu defeats the chairman, but before he dies, he tells Ryu that the LOA's big plan is to destroy this world to bring rise to a new one, and the goddess of this new world will be Kana. So they're gonna turn this poor little girl into a goddess. Yup. Cuz plot. He moves on and runs into the region, looking at Kana and the God Egg. Then he beats the shit out of him, which removes his mask. It's at that moment that he realizes the regent is Kana's father. Wait, wait, what? Isn't that guy dead? He was, but this is where Cliff comes into the picture. Cliff made this plan a while ago, but his brother was obviously against it because it's crazy. So Cliff caused the accident that killed him. Then this guy revived him, then erased his memories, all for Ryu to be the one to kill him. What is this man's problem? So thanks to his plan, Kana now sees Ryu as a murderer of her father, and that completes the curse in his arm. But Kana, you did know that your father was dead, right? Ryu collapses from the curse, then the brother killer uses his chance to stab Ryu and pull the dragon sword out of him. Now it is pure and free from all the blood that was spilled on it, because that all got transferred over to Ryu thanks to this curse. We know it doesn't make much sense, but bear with us. Cliff then tossed the sword at the god egg, and it finishes the god creation process. Kana then erupts in the machine, as a goddess holding the dragon sword. The JSDF tried to stop her, but she's a god, so good luck with that. Meanwhile, in a dream, Ryu meets the spirit of Genshin, but this time it's a good kind of spirit, not a fiend or anything. His old adversary gives him the spiritual part of the Sword of the Archfiend, which awakens the physical blade. Then he wakes up from his dream to find Mizuki nursing him back to hell. With Ryu conscious again, the good guys head to Tokyo to save Kana, and by good guys, we mostly mean Ryu. They run into Cliff, who is now also a mutated monster, and they almost die to him. But they're saved by Theodore, Kana's father, and he kills Cliff. Even though this man died and had his memories erased, he somehow got them back and now he's here to help Ryu fight the good fight. But you know what's actually ridiculous? When they ask Cliff why he did all this, he's like, you guys always like my brother better than me. I just want to be in the spotlight. Are you dead ass, bro? You put the world in danger and Kana just for the spotlight? This man is wily. They push onward, but then Theo's randomly like, actually, I changed my mind. 
I don't think we can save Kana anymore, and it is your duty to kill her with that sword. But as her father, I can't allow that. My mans, did you forget that both of you are trying to save your daughter? You good, bro? With that, the two fight, but Ryu wins again. But this time, the regent releases the curse from Ryu's arm. Then he tells Ryu that this was his atonement for what he's done. So it looks like this was all an act to get Ryu to kill him. I mean, they're more like Clifton since he was controlling him, but okay. After Theo dies, Ryu prepares to challenge God as Kana. And he takes his mask off this time because this shit is serious. After a hard battle, both their swords shatter. But the true dragon sword returns to Ryu. And he uses it to free Kana. With that, the day is saved once again, and Ryu leaves his new friends to continue his ninja duties. Later in Ninja Gaiden X, a mobile game, Ryu is challenged by his father to truly test his training over the years. Using everything he's learned, he defeats his father. Then Joe states that he no longer has any regrets and claims that he will defeat Jackio, the King of Devils. And this goes into the first Ninja Gaiden game for the NES. Bet you didn't think this story would go back to the old games, huh? In this game, Ryu receives a letter from his father, stating that he challenged the King of Devils to a life or death duel. And if he doesn't return, then he should head to America and meet his friend, Dr. Walter Smith. On the way to find this guy, he runs into a CIA agent named Irene, who ends up becoming his girlfriend later on, and she gives him a demon statue. He eventually finds Dr. Smith, and the doc tells him of Demon, the deity of destruction. 700 years ago, he was sealed away in two demon statues by a ninja from the dragon lineage. But now that the Devil King has returned, he wants to use the statues to summon Demon and gain ultimate power. Ryu eventually runs into the king, who's using his father as a puppet, but he manages to save his father and strike down Jackio. Then with the help of Irene, they try to leave this place, but then Demon gets summoned, only for Ryu to cut it down too. The battle with Demon destroys the place they're in though, and unfortunately, Ryu is forced to leave his dad to die in the falling rubble. Now we move to Ninja Gaiden 3, the old one, not the new one. Ryu randomly finds out that there's a clone of him, and it murdered Irene. So he goes after the clone to clear his name, but after defeating it, he finds out that Irene is still alive. Together, they discover the mastermind of this plan is someone named Clancy, so they take him out before he's able to do more evil shit. Then, in Ninja Gaiden 2 Dark Sword of Chaos, Ryu deals with the sorcerer who is trying to open the gates to the realm of chaos in order to release demonic quartz on the world. After defeating the sorcerer, he fights to revive Jackio and wins. And that is the end of Ryu's story when it comes to the main Ninja Gaiden series. Wait, we're not done? Nah, remember bro, Dead or Alive is still canon, and there's also Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. Bro, how many times does this man have to save the world? As many times as necessary. So Ryu's entry in DOA begins when he finds out that his friend from the Mugen Tenshin Ninja Clan, Kasumi, left her clan to avenge her brother Hayate. If you didn't know, Kasumi is the main character of the DOA series. Kasumi joins the DOA tournament to go after her uncle Raido, who had almost killed her brother. She gets to him and kills him, but then she's captured by Doa Tech for testing. Doatek being the Dead or Alive Tournament Executive Committee. Later, a supernatural being known as the Tengu of Destruction shows up and plunges the world into chaos. A DOA tournament is set up to defeat the being, and Ryu enters this one as well. During the tournament, he goes up against Kasumi and beats her, thus preventing her from fighting the Tengu. Then he runs into his old friend Hayate, but now he goes by Ayn and his memories are gone. During their battle though, Hayate starts getting hit with all of his memories. Then after defeating his old friend, Ryu proceeds to the Tengu and defeats it so no one else has to. Later, Doatek kidnaps another member of the Mugen Tenshin clan, named Genra, to experiment on him. Ryu tries to get involved, but Hayate tells him that this is their clan's problem, so he backs off. But then Hayate calls him the help of Ryu after they kill Genra. The ninja is done with Doatek messing with his clan, so they team up and assault the DOA base, putting an end to them once and for all. And this takes us out of the DOA continuity, and throws us in the last game that we're going to get into today, Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. In this chapter of Ryu's wild life, he finds a ninja named Yaiba Kamikaze from the Kamikaze Ninja Clan. Ryu demands that he hand over his Tempest Blade so the Hayabusa clan can keep it locked away, but Yaiba's not trying to have that, so they fight. Ryu wins because he's freaking Ryu, then he heads home. But get this, two weeks later, he hears about a zombie outbreak. A zombie outbreak? Don't you please don't tell me this man Ryu is about to fight some zombies? Yes. But why? He's already fought fiends, ninja, ninja fiends, vampires, gods, and dinosaurs. Dinosaurs! Why of all things do we have to add zombies to the mix? Because the team behind this game said all that shit wasn't crazy enough. So Ryu and Momiji work together to put an end to this zombie outbreak in the background, while Yaiba carries out the plot. On the way, Ryu fights Yaiba two more times because he refuses to stay dead. He wins both times, but after the last battle, Yaiba does something good for once. He stops Del Gonzo, the person responsible for the outbreak. But then he leaves it to scientist named Miss Monday to try to make money off the zombie cure. And that is the end of Ryu's story. Like the actual end, no bullshit this time. Finally! Jeez, that was long. Well, this is Ryu Hayabusa, so the long story was kinda expected. 
And the crazy part is this story isn't even done yet, since he's gonna return in Ninja Gaiden 4, whenever that comes out. But now that we finally cover the story of the infamous Dragon Ninja, let us know how you feel about him in the comments below. Well, my opinion hasn't changed. He's still the most badass ninja in gaming history, but the shit he goes through is just why though? Indeed. I actually didn't know that Ryu was super chill and compassionate when it came to his loved ones. He's not as super serious and edgelord as I thought he was, and I like that. With that being said, end slate. What's going on fam? I hope you're doing well and thank you for watching another episode of Honest Gaming History. This one took a while but I know it's gonna be worth it because a lot of you guys wanted it and I'm here to please the people. I'm here to please you guys, the fam. And you know obviously have a good time and stuff but if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like, comment who else you'd like to see me cover in future episodes of Honest Gaming History, subscribe if you want to see more of me and hit that bell if you want to be notified whenever I upload new content. Shout out to all my dope patrons. Without you guys I would not be able to make dope videos like this. And if you are not already a patron but would like to become one, go to my Patreon page in the description below and find out how you can support the channel for as little as $1 a month. And two of the perks you get with that, because I added one more, is having a full archive of all my streams and watching videos like this a day earlier before they come out. So yeah, good stuff for a dollar a month. However, as you guys know, if you cannot support me financially, just you being here, getting this far in the video and all that stuff, liking, sharing, whatever you did, that helps out a lot, so I still appreciate you for being here. Love you. But with that being said, I am off this. So be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, fam.